Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a non-standard equation. This is a non-standard equation because we have an exponential function on one side and we have a linear or polynomial function on the other side. So these kinds of problems cannot be solved by formulas. We kind of have to think differently or think outside the box. First of all, I want you to notice two things. 1 half to the power x. If I call that f of x, this function is always decreasing. Why? Because it's an exponential function with a base between 0 and 1. Obviously, with exponential functions, you don't want the base to be negative. That's going to be crazy because as x values change, especially when they become rational like 1 half or, you know, 2 thirds or whatever, it's just going to be jumping around the place. You're going to have to deal with complex solutions, so on and so forth. That's why we want the base to be positive. And if it's between 0 and 1, the function is decreasing. So its graph is actually going to look like this. For a decreasing function, it's going to look like this. Make sense? So what about the other one? Let's call that g of x. g of x equals x plus 6. x plus 6 is a linear function with a slope of 1 which is a positive slope, therefore it is going to be an increasing function. And its intercepts, x equals 0 is going to give us 6 and y equals 0 is going to give us negative 6. So it's going to go something like this, but it's always increasing. Make sense? So we have a decreasing function equals an increasing function, and guess what? They can only intersect at a single point. And now put these two together and see what happens they're going to intersect at a single point. And guess what? That's going to be a negative x value. Great. Once you see that, hopefully the rest is going to be easy. But I'm thinking about like, okay, this is my equation. And if I don't see the solution immediately, then I can do a little bit of transformation. Let's do a little bit of mathematic or hocus pocus. So first, let's write this as 2 to the power of negative x equals x plus 6. And then I want to replace negative x with something. How about setting negative x equal to z? I don't want to use y because y is usually used like f of x or g of x. So let's use z. This gives us 2 to the z. And if negative x is z, then x is going to be negative z. They're opposites. So this will become negative z plus 6 or 6 minus z. Looking at it this way is actually a little easier. So hopefully you see the solution. Do you? Well, from here, z is equal to 2. Obviously, if you're looking for integer solutions, this is easy. If there are no integer solutions, that's a different story. And we're also going to take a look at it because that's going to be our second method. Sort of. Okay? Anyways, so z equals 2 works, but that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for x, but x is negative z, so x is going to be negative 2. So negative 2 is the solution. You could see that, but that would be a little harder. 1 half to the power negative 2 is 2 to the power 2, which is 4. And then negative 2 plus 6 is also 4. But again, this is better. Okay, x equals negative 2 works, and it's the only solution. Therefore, we solve the problem. Case closed. Are we going home? Not yet, because we're still going to look at something else. And I'm also going to show you a graph, a neat one, not like mine at the end. Okay, so now let's see how we can do this with the second method. I mean, first method is kind of like guess and check, right? So do you consider that a method? I do, because it's a problem solving method. Anyway, some people don't like it, but I hope they'll like it. So I'm going to start here, 2 to the power of negative x equals x plus 6. Remember, we already wrote the 1 half to the x. And now I'm going to do a little bit of manipulation, okay? Let's first write this as e to the power ln 2 to the power negative x because anything like t can be written as e to the ln t, right? Great. And we're dealing with real numbers, so we don't have to worry about, uh, what is that called? Complex exponentiation. Ooh, big deal. Okay. So now this is equal to x plus 6. And then we can go ahead and bring this negative x to the front. And this becomes e to the power negative x ln 2 equals x plus 6. So, to solve this problem, I'm going to use a very special function. I hope you are familiar with that, at least you know how it works, and that's called 
Lambert's W function. Ready? Okay. So we're going to manipulate this to make it Lambertable or Wable. Okay. So here's what we're going to do first. Let's go ahead and bring this e to the negative x on uh, on the other side by multiplication. So let's multiply both sides by e to the power x ln 2 times e to the power x ln 2. Obviously, when you multiply these two things, you're going to add the exponents, and that's going to give you e to the power 0, which is 1. Isn't that awesome? And we're going to get x plus 6 times e to the power x ln 2 equals 1. Nice. So this is what we have so far. We're going to manipulate it more because we can manipulate expressions, but don't manipulate people. And let's see how what we can do. So I have an x plus 6. I want to get an x plus 6. So here's my goal. Let me tell you how Wolfram... Wait a minute. It's not Wolfram. It starts with W. What is it? Lambert's W, yes. Lambert's W function. So if you have an input like T e to the T, Lambert's W function is just going to turn t. So in other words, it's the inverse function for t e to the t because w inverse t is t e to the t. Make sense? Okay, great. Now, let's go ahead and see if we can bring our expression to this form, which is t e to the t form. Now, to be able to do that, we're going to multiply and divide by stuff. Okay, ready? Now, I have an x ln 2, and I have an x plus 6. I'd like to have x plus 6, but it's not x, it's x ln 2. So instead, I want to have x plus 6 ln 2. Get it? I can multiply, but I can't take out the ln 2. That's going to be problematic. So let's go ahead, and, and this since this is x ln 2 plus 6 ln 2, I do need to add 6 ln 2 here. Make sense? So for that purpose... I'm going to multiply both sides by e to the power 6 ln 2. And of course, I have 1 on the right-hand side, so it's just going to be e to the power 6 ln 2. But wait a minute. That is just going to give me the following. x plus 6 times e to the power x ln 2 plus 6 ln 2, which can be written as x plus 6 ln 2. And now I can bring this... 6 over here and write it as e to the power ln 64, right? Because 2 to the 6 is 64. But e to the power ln 64 is just 64. Awesome. I got it, right? So we're going to work on this a little bit more. Now, the next thing I got to do is I do have x plus 6 ln 2, but I don't have it here. So my t needs to be changed. So let's go ahead and multiply both sides by ln 2 here and here. Multiplying on the left and right don't matter, right, for real um, numbers or for whatever ring we are dealing with. So we get x plus 6 ln 2 times e to the power x plus 6 ln 2 equals 64 ln 2. Wow, such a large number, right? Well, I got my t. This is my t. So if I apply Lambert's w on this, and I, I'm going to be getting the t back. So this is going to be after applying Lambert's, it's going to be x plus 6 ln 2. And on the right hand side, I'm going to be applying Lambert's w on 64 ln 2. I don't know what it is yet, but I'm going to work it out. Okay, ready? Now, I got my uh, x plus 6 on the left hand side. Let's go ahead and simplify the right hand side by writing w64 ln 2 as w16 times 4 times ln 2. And then now this was this is going to become 2 to the power 4, which is 16. So it's going to be 16 times ln 16. And then finally, I can write this as ln 16 times e to the power ln 16, because that's what 16 can be written as. You see, that's the, the thing we used here, a little trick. And if you apply Lambert's W to that, you're going to get what back? This T, which is ln 16. And on the, oops, I added an extra one there, ln 16. And on the left hand side, we have x plus 6 times ln 2. Awesome. Now, here is the fun part. We're almost done. ln 16 is ln 2 to the fourth power, which can be written as 4 times ln 2. ln 2 is not 0 as far as I know. 
So it cancels out, leaving us with x plus 6 equals 4. Subtract 6 from both sides, and you get x equals negative 2 as before. Awesome, right? And this brings us to the graph, not to the end. And yay, they intersect at a single point. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.